In today's video, we talk about a ProMaster based Class B RV taken to new heights, literally. This is the Regency RV. Stay tuned. Appreciate that. My name is Scott. I'm your host. Welcome to Go Small, Live Large, YouTube channel dedica dedicated to the Class B. That would be a van RV lifestyle. Really appreciate you tuning in today. Really excited that Guernsey RV has granted us access to some really unique units. This one has caught my eye because it's a Ram Promaster, but you can see how tall it is, right? They've cut that roof off and they've added, we're going to measure a lot of height to this rig on the inside and the outside. Yes. I'm using my our measuring tape to convey the height of this vehicle. The It's literally nine feet, really 10 feet tall. Uh, and again, what they've done is they've taken a ProMaster, cut the roof off, the rooftop line is right here, and they've added another um, you know, foot and a half to the actual uh, height of the rig. Why that is, I'm not quite certain. Certainly adds some headroom to the to the rig. And one of the complaints about the Ram ProMaster, as you probably know, it's the shortest in height from the four, three chassis, Transit being the tallest, followed by Sprinter, then ProMaster. ProMaster is the widest. So maybe what they were trying to do is make a, <clears throat> the widest and tallest Class B RV in this space without going um, staying within the confines of the van chassis itself. Um, let's do a quick walk around and then we'll jump inside. So clearly we can see from the outside they've done some uh, cosmetic work here. Um, I think it looks pretty cool. What do you think? Um, graphics, stripes, it doesn't look like your typical RV. It's using standard wheels and tires, but it looks like what they've done is plasti dip the actual wheels. So this is actually standard a tire wheel um, blacked out. Um, this is a fiberglass skirt um, hiding some of the the components down below. Docking station is probably the um, water uh, connection is my guess. I can't get in there. This is probably the sewer hose, right? We know about that. Here's your black tank, uh, which is kind of an interesting place for it. I like that. The question is, where's the valves, right? Um, this doesn't open, so um, it may be there. So that could be a little tricky. And what does this indicate? Yeah, it's got a generator. <laughs> we like Volta better, right? Um, and this clearly is a furnace. And this is a nice, um, I love the style where it's uh, angled. Uh, what is that, 90 degree angle? So it's not pulling you know, like this. It's made to plug in sideways. This is the National Traveler. Clearly this is the, uh, the back door. Really soft material, really nice. Really feels highly, high quality, I would say. Um, this is kind of a cool floor plan in the sense that um, you do have some garage storage here. These come together to form what I would say is a good sized bed, but let's measure. So the bed would be just over four foot wide. And then in length, it's gonna be about five feet wide. Now when these come together, depending on how you wanna sleep, it's a longer uh, bed this way, which would give you just a, just a little under um, six feet. So again, these configurations are popular. Um, you put a table here, obviously. Um, so you could have a permanent table until you need to go to sleep, in which case you need to remove it and then configure your bed. Let's keep going around the outside. You can see the bug screen, right? It's got a backup camera, that's nice. And again, you can see the height difference here. Uh, that is easily an extra 14, 15 inches, right? Um, and we'll see inside what that difference makes. And this is actually a pretty good angle here. You can see that there's the one cabinet, which is pretty traditional, uh, but then there's a second entirely additive cabinet to the top of that um, up here and on this side. So we'll jump inside and take a look at that. But that's pretty cool. Mosquito netting, obviously. So falling on the outside, um, here they've got some, uh, looks like a speaker system and um, patio lighting, which is pretty cool. Uh, here's some more venting for the uh, suburban water heater. So that's your water heater. This would be um, 
Ooh, a little grease there. Um, for outlets, which is cool. Let me uh, step around here. Now, one thing um, my partner Kyle found this to be super interesting is, yes, a TV outside with kind of a cool idea for not an outdoor kitchen, but an outdoor table. So this is really a, a clever idea using a strap system. And this is this lifts up against and the TV kind of folds into the, into the thing here. That's pretty cool. Um, above us is the awning. So this is a armless awning. Uh, it's about the same length as uh, my Travado. I see lights here, which is awesome. What I kind of like about this one is it's, it's not just a white piece of material above it. You can see it's kind of got some diffusing, which makes it a little less garish probably in, in real practical usage. Um, what do you think so far? Is this something interesting to you? I'm kind of intrigued actually. Okay, let's jump inside. So the first thing you notice jumping inside is it is considerably taller feeling. Um, it's really tall. So let's measure the, and there's no, by the way, if you look down below, there's no step up. So like in the Travado, it's regular floor height until here, then you have like this four inch step up. There is none in this rig, which is kind of interesting. Um, so let's measure the ceiling height. Oh my goodness. This thing is, are you ready for this? 87 inches tall, floor to ceiling. So that is, uh, for us math challenge people, that is seven feet, four inches. That's insane. So if you are height challenged and you want the ProMaster chassis, because again, the width, this is an absolutely an alternative you need to check out. Um, this is pretty cool. Um, let's jump in and then we'll just give a quick round tour in here. What we have here is a second TV. This is pretty nice. And then above is a lot of open space. This is really pretty cool. Very practical in my opinion, um, leaving it open. So this is a lot of storage with a stretchy net thing to hold you know, blankets or what have you. Um, here again is another bed. My guess is that this pulls out to here. So if you've got a small kid that this would, um, um, probably come out to here, so I'm guessing probably 40 inches, 40 inches of um, additional bid space. Assuming that it looks like from the mechanics, this moves out. Um, so that's kind of cool. Again, if you got a small kid, that's that's pretty groovy. Um, let's look at these cabinets up here. So again, you got one and two, and then the space down below. So this obviously holds, holds some of the um, um, systems, but having this extra Wow, that's cabinet above is, is really interesting. Now I'm 5'10", so that is going to require a step stool to get into. But again, if you're on the tall side, you won't need that probably. Interesting that it has uh, in cabinet lighting, which is pretty, pretty awesome. And while it's not positive locking, that thing is really kind of hard to open. So I would say it's almost positive locking. I'm spinning around. Let's look at the ca uh, galley here. So we got the kind of a residential style sink, which is pretty amazing. We'll look at that in a minute. And faucet, which is cool. Cutting board, pretty good sink. Pretty deep, right? Um, and this is placed in a good good air area um, as this counter extension goes up. So you have this full width, which is, um, 50 inches wide, basically. So that's pretty deep. That's about as wide as my Travato. Um, but what's nice by this placement, you have you know good um, usage of this space. Clearly has an induction cooktop, which is great. That's pretty easy. If we look down here, we have three three drawers. Definitely. Oh, soft clothes. That's nice. Look at that and pretty stiff to pull out, which is great. Um, outlets here, which is cool. Got a small fridge, which opens this way. So, you know, I call that okay, I guess. <laughs> and um, that has a microwave up above, which is uh, pretty cool, right? That's, in fact, that's the same microwave I have in my Travato. Under counter lighting. What I'm finding also that's really nice about this is that it's real, real hard wood. This is not veneered press board. It is um, lacquered, really quality hard wood in all the cabinets, the drawers. Um, again, they're they're not 
you know, press board, which is pretty cool. And the build quality, I'd say, is pretty, pretty, pretty good. So here's a control panel here, so kind of multiplex wiring, um, which uh, people like. I have not experienced it in real life, but I'm guessing it's pretty well done. This is going to be, let's see, ah, a pantry. It's probably a little dark, sorry guys. I don't know how to turn the lights on. <laughs> Um, but it's pretty deep, right? Let's see if we can get a quick measurement on that for you. So that goes back um, 16 inches, which is pretty good. So behind this glass door is the El Bano. So as typical in the Class B, it's got a, a wet bath, so toilet, shower, sink integrated. Um, no window, that's probably standard. Um, it does not have a sink. You saw that, right? Um, I do like this shower arrangement. That does look a little bit better than, than my Travado. Um, but you're using the kitchen sink for all your sink duties in the bathroom. So that's probably okay in a lot of cases. I love my, my sink. So here's a, a little cubby up here. So that may be nice for like a folding chair or something. Could go in there. And if we come back to the back, this is a wardrobe. Let's take a look at that quick. So pretty deep. And a mirror, which is nice. Uh, above us is... What's up? <laughs> I want to thank Kyle for being the cameraman today. Appreciate that. Uh, above us is the um, Dometic air conditioner. And again, let's look at this cabinetry. Um, so again, full size cabinets above. So that's really interesting. Um, and this one is quite a bit deeper than this one, but you can get a lot of clothes in there, I am pretty sure. So what you're gaining is ceiling height and additional storage, I would say. Uh, so traditional shades pull down, that's pretty cool. Um, and here's a, a rack uh, mounting place for the uh, an additional TV. So you could have three TVs in here, which is pretty amazing. So with that, let's take a look at the price and the spec sheet uh, that we saw on the sink. So again, what we're looking at is a 2019 um, National Traveler Deluxe uh, by Regency RV. What's cool about Regency RV is they're actually made in Fort Worth, Texas. How about that? So here's the MSRP, 118 grand. We know that can probably come off a little bit. Uh, so kind of in the same price range as a, a Travado. Um, with or without lithium, but it's pretty long. It's hard for me to read all these. I'll have to take a picture and, and call out what's really interesting here. Um, I can't even read the uh, upgrades here. Sorry guys, but it's, it's got $2,700 of the upgrades. Can you read that? I can't read it, that's so funny. We'll do some homework there for you and put out some of the highlights on here. 
looking carefully at the uh, spec sheet, the biggest thing that I'm seeing that makes this van really unique is the 7 foot 4 inch max interior ceiling height. No solar, no lithium, it does have a gas generator and a 20 or 2000 watt inverter. Everything else is sort of standard from what I see. And just a quick pan of the uh, front cab. So they've got the uh, covered seating, which is nice leather. It feels like leather. Um, standard ProMaster, nothing special there. Okay, let's jump outside and we'll wrap this up. So what'd you think of this? National Traveler, again, Ram ProMaster by Regency RV out of Fort Worth, Texas. What I'm finding to be the big benefit here is ceiling height on the interior. So again, if you're looking for the widest and now probably one of the tallest uh, Class B RVs, you need to check out these guys. I was not familiar with them until I came into this dealership. And I just want to thank Guernsey RV here in Fort Myers, um, Florida for giving us access to this rig. Um, would I buy it for myself? Probably not because I don't need the height. But if you're over six, you know, two, three, four inches tall and you want to stay in a small form factor, uh, overall Class B, I would seriously put this on your list. I would give the build quality a two thumbs up and um, some of the ingenuity that went into it looks pretty good to me. And it just looks sharp. Right? What do you think? So comment below. Um, would this kind of a rig be interesting to you? Um, is this price point about right? Is uh, these types of features, here being the, seat, the height interior being the biggest feature, something you'd be interested in? Comment below. I sure appreciate that. And as always, if you got something out of this, appreciate a thumb up. And if you like this kind of content, please become a subscriber to the channel. It costs you nothing and just helps grow the success of this channel. would really appreciate that. So with that, we'll say that's a wrap for now and wish you to journey on. Thanks.